Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, white and red or a Jeskai colored Hinata deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Hinata, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four flying trample, so spells we cast cost 1 less to cast for each target, whereas spells your opponents cast cost 1 more to cast for each target. So Hinata will benefit from spells that can target multiple things at once, and that's of course a big part of the deck, especially when it comes to closing out the game. We've got some burn spells that can potentially target multiple things at once to deal a ton of damage. I split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with the mana acceleration, mostly ramp artifacts, then we've got our interaction, some spot removal spells, a few sweepers that mostly deal 3 damage to all creatures so we don't take out our own Hinata. And then we've got a category dedicated to things that can target multiple cards at once to get a huge discount from Hinata. And then we've got the protection category, ways to protect Hinata, and maybe a few counter spells as well to stop the opponent from enacting their game plan. And then we've got our card advantage category, ways to kind of pull ahead in the game to make sure we can keep the cards flowing. And then we've got a few planeswalkers as well, which can also tie things together nicely. So starting with the mana acceleration, at 2 mana we've got the classics, Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone and the Iron Crag to try and set up a turn 3 Hinata. And then at 3 mana there's a Midnight Clock, which provides a lot of extra utility, potentially refreshing our hand. The file can also draw us extra cards if we're empty-handed. The Celestus gives us a bit of card selection and life gain. And then Worn Power Stone makes two colorless mana, which can be helpful when casting some of our expensive spells. And then of course Goldspan Dragon, another all-star if it gets to attack a few times, generating treasures that tap for two mana. Then in our removal section, at one mana there's Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt. Get Lost is also quite versatile. Then Heartflame Duelist can deal 3 damage with the Adventure, and then can be a 2 mana 3 1, giving our spells a lifelink, which can also gain us a lot of life back when casting huge burn spells. A Braid can deal with artifacts or creatures. We've got Brazen Borrower as a bounce spell, and then a creature. We've got the Bone Crusher dealing 2, and then a 4 3 afterwards. And then we've got our Sweepers, including Anger of the Gods, Sweltering Suns, and Deafening Clarion. We can also give Hinata a lifelink. And then Prismari Command can also be a versatile answer to artifacts, creatures, can maybe draw and discard or make a treasure. And March of Otherworld Lay Lights, another versatile answer that can also get a nice discount from Hinata. And then uh, next up we've got Inscription of Insight, which we can kick to choose all three modes, including Bouncing to Creatures, Scry to Draw to, and then creating an XX Blue Illusion token equal to the number of cards in hand after having drawn to, and that also targets a player, so we can potentially get a 3 mana discount, so instead of paying 8 mana for a kicked Inscription we're only paying 5, and then uh, Curving Hinata into a kicked Inscription can be quite powerful got C double to maybe copy a spell that's on the stack and can also create a token that's a copy of target creature so mostly going to target the opponent's creatures since we don't have many ourselves and we can potentially choose both if an opponent has eight or more cards in graveyard so then it's only double blue to select both modes with Hinata in play. Pearl's expertise can bounce multiple creatures and artifacts while also casting a four mana spell for free got Karn's Temporal Sundering, which will bounce an opposing permanent, and we also get to target ourselves to take an extra turn, so that only costs us 4 mana with Hinata out. Sublime Epiphany also has a ton of different targets, can counter a target spell, counter an activated or triggered ability, can bounce a permanent back, copy a creature we control, and draw a card also targeting a player, so it can easily be cast for just double blue. Then Magma Opus can also be cast for just a blue and a red if we target four different creatures and tap two lands down as well. Get to make a 4-4 token and to draw two cards. Then a Buy Force can destroy multiple artifacts for just a single red mana with Hinata in play. Heal its intervention deals with both artifacts and enchantments for double white. We've got Crackle with Power, which is one of our preferred finishers with Hinata in play, as we can potentially deal 10 or 15 damage to the opponent directly. The Immolating Inferno is pretty similar, it requires a legendary creature or planeswalker in play before we can cast the legendary sorcery, so it's similar to the Temporal Sundering there. And then a Shadow Skull Smashing can be played as a land or a removal spell for multiple creatures and planeswalkers. And then Expansion can potentially copy a cheaper spell, but we're mostly interested in Explosion, drawing us a ton of extra cards while dealing damage, and this also has two different targets. And then a Mass Manipulation can pretty easily steal all the opponent's creatures and planeswalkers with Hinata out. Then uh, next up we go to some of our counter spells, including Wash Away to counter opposing commanders for just a single blue mana. We've got a Memory Lapse, Negate for non-creature spells, Tails End can also counter opposing commanders and other various legendaries. And then of course Counterspell, even though it doesn't get a discount from Hinata. 
And then we've got Sejiri Shelter, can be played as a land or maybe for just a single white Protect Hinata. We've got Shelter, which also draws a card. And then a Valorous Stance can be used as removal or to maybe make Hinata indestructible. And March of Swirling Mist can also protect Hinata for just a single blue, while also maybe phasing out opposing creatures for a turn. And then uh, next up we've got some card draw with Brainstorm, which pairs quite well with all the new fetch lands that we get to play to shuffle unwanted cards back into our deck. We've got Expressive Iteration as a nice 2 for 1. The Sea Shark can generate lots of Incubator tokens, which we can then turn into creatures. Got Fable of the Mirror Breaker, giving us some more card selection and potentially additional mana with the Shaman. Got a Whirlwind of Thought, drawing us extra cards whenever we cast a non-creature spell. Time Warp as another way to take an extra turn. Got the Shark Typhoon, can potentially cast it as an enchantment, although typically we'll be cycling it to draw a card and make a shark token. Got the Torrential Gearhulk, which is awesome at flashing back some of our powerful instants, especially good alongside Sublime Epiphany, as we get to copy the Gearhulk and get back another instant while doing a bunch more stuff. And then a Jengitaxius to maybe copy some of our powerful instants and sorceries can also be devastating. And Ovika can also make lots of Phyrexian Goblin tokens with haste if we cast some expensive spells. And then our Planeswalkers include a Narset, can shut down opposing card draw while finding more non-creature spells. Chandra can add extra mana or deal for damage to creatures. Then a Jace can bounce creatures with a minus two while scrying one and drawing a card with a plus one. The fairy simply draws, but also gets to untap two lands end of turn with a plus one, whereas the minus three is another versatile removal effect. And finally, Chandra Hope's Beacon can copy spells with a passive ability each turn, and can also give us extra mana or find more non-creature spells. And then a minus X, also a versatile way to deal a bit of extra damage. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward, lots of dual lands for fixing. I did include the temples, since we're usually not doing much on turn one, and the scry is useful. And then we've got the fetch lands, of course, to grab our various shock lands, and even the Rogren Triome for additional mana fixing. And then the only other utility lands are the ones with channel to make some tokens, bounce opposing stuff back, and potentially deal for damage. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kaito, Dancing Shadow. So blue-black. Our hands a little land light, even though negates good against our commander. This hand's also a little awkward. A few too many expensive spells, although I do have a Mind Stone if I find blue mana. I guess I would still need double red for gold span. Yeah, I don't think this will do. Alright, this is our best hand so far. Could keep up counter spell, but probably gonna play Cold Steel Heart. Opponent's got the Iron Crag. So they can already play Kaito next turn, so how about Celestus keep up counter spell? And then next turn we can Hinata keep up counter spell. Oracle of the Alpha is fine. Don't really care. So it's pretty obvious that we're holding on to something now. Grim Tutor, that's fine. I'll just counter whatever they search up. Assuming it's something that's not uncounterable. They might have gotten some of the power 9 that they just put in the deck with Oracle. Yep, Time Walk. So I guess we'll just counter that. We could also let it resolve, since it's not like they did anything too scary here. But I think it's reasonable to counter. So we can take our own extra turn. And hopefully pull ahead. Want to find a nice expensive spell here. Deafening Clarion just deals with Oracle of the Alpha. So maybe activate a Celestus here, see what we find. Crackle, that's a good one. So I could just keep land Crackle and then next turn Crackle for a million damage. So 
So we actively want Oracle to stay around so we can target it with Crackle. And there's Kaito. All right, hopefully they don't have a counter spell left. Bonin picks up Oracle again. Kaito draws. And a Black Lotus, nice. And replays Oracle. And Chart, of course, her opponent's tapped out. And then how much can we crackle for here? I have six, seven, eight. Figuring out crackle with power usually requires a PhD in math. So I'm just gonna try x equals four and see if that works. All right, we're a little bit short. So I guess x equals three is still lethal, 15 damage, and that we can pay for. Awesome. And that's game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a tally, a ramp, and we've got a keepable hand. Don't think I'll need shelter to protect Hinata necessarily, so I'll just run it out on turn one. And then we've got a bit of ramp, Prismari command for interaction. And then we're waiting for maybe a curve topper. Turn two signets, we could take out with a Prismari command. Yeah, that seems fine. And then treasure versus draw to discard two. I think uh, treasure's fine. Now with Torrential Gear Hulk, we can eventually get back Prismari command. So we just want to get there sooner. And Domery to make their stuff uncounterable. And a Crackle is going to be great with Hinata. So how about we Celestus plus File. And then next turn we'll be able to play the Gear Hulk at the very least. Playing Hinata when they can potentially fight it doesn't seem great, although... They would need a pretty substantial creature for that to work. Their opponent's got five mana. And a black market tycoon could eventually make treasures and a reclamation sage. That's too bad. Blows up file. Still have six mana for Gear Hulk at least. And now an expansion explosion as well. So taking out the Tycoon can delay Itali for a turn. If they use Castle, then they're not going to have double red for a tally. What's that? Something smells rotten. Wait, that might be me. So it's going to be a Carited. And an Antish Restoration to get two lands here. Okay, so next turn they can cast a tally. Let's see if we can do some damage in the meantime. Time warp, if that helps. So we can't copy it with expansion. But it still seems worthwhile.
Putin and Trumps once again. A little bit short of taking out Domri with Shatter Skull Smashing. So this might be a turn for Hinata, and then next turn we'll just go off with either Crackle or Expansion Explosion. Yeah, I guess we could deal two damage with Explosion right now, since we have two targets. But I'll just play this tapped and pass. And hopefully Itali doesn't find anything too devastating. If they hit one of our X spells without X, of course it's not that great. Deafening Clarion is fine, and Delina, so... Could have been worse. Alright, get to untap, and the Immolating Inferno is also great. So let's see here, we have... 6 lands, 7, 8 mana total, and then the discount from Hinata. So, can we do x equals 3? We can. And then go face, opponent has to chump. And then we still have some nice ones left, but opponent has given up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Narset and Lightened Master. So we actually have an answer with Anger of the Gods, since it doesn't target. And then Negate could maybe counter one of their ramp spells. So this hand's not bad. Start by getting a Triome. Maybe hang on to the other fetch land in case we draw Brainstorm. Oracle of the Alpha resolves. And don't have much going on. Want to save the Anger to answer Narset. Next turn we can play Hinata. Okay, we'll go for Hinata. If they counter it, that's fine. And then next turn, Goldspan's an option too. A Narset of the Ancient Way can probably take out Hinata with the ability, and since it's not a spell, they don't have to pay the one extra mana. Okay, that's fine. We'll be able to play Goldspan and finish off Narset. Which is pretty good. And then still have Negate available. And there's Brainstorm, so glad we still have our fetch land. Bone must have a Pact of Negation in hand if they were pausing while tapped out. So that's good to know about, I guess. They can counter the Anger of the Gods, but we could then negate the Pact. Then they don't have to pay for it. So it feels kind of bad. Oracle attacks. And a Brazen Borrower attempting to bounce Goldspan. So we'll get the treasure and then can try to negate. So they also don't get the creature half of the adventure. Take our turn. And then step one, probably attack. Putin currently cannot pay for a Pact of Negation, so could tap out for Chandra and then double Brainstorm sounds appealing. Like 
And then, what else do we want to do? Maybe add some mana. Okay, Sublime Epiphany and Gearhulk are kind of a combo. So, we'll just redraw the same card so it doesn't really matter. Maybe Expansion Explosion's not necessary. Can play a Celestus here after fetching. And then we still have a lane drop. Anger for Narsets, although that may not be a huge concern. And then a combo of Epiphany, get it back with Gear Hulk, make a copy of Gear Hulk. And then maybe brainstorm or negate. It's gonna be hard to beat. Okay, opponents putting in some effort with the time warp. So next turn they could cast Narsets, but uh, we've got Anger. And with the extra mana from Chandra, we should be able to also cast a Gear Hulk or Epiphany. And I guess even without a mana from Chandra, we still have enough for Anger plus 6 drop. Alright, points got their own Chandra. Pretty decent here. Can take out our Chandra and Goldspan. And be left at one loyalty. Now Crucible could be a way to finish it off. If I play Hinata, can we realistically cast Sublime Epiphany still? If we counter a spell, can always target Hinata, draw a card. So it's going to be pretty cheap to cast the Epiphany. Could also play Hinata and then channel Crucible for 3 mana to finish off Chandra. Although I'm kind of liking the uh, Sublime Epiphany line, and hopefully we won't regret it. I guess they still have that Pact of Negation, so that might complicate matters a little bit. Right, opponent lets it resolve. Although what happens if they cast Pact of Negation with Chandra in play to double it? Would they then have to pay 10 mana? Or does one of the Pacts fizzle, most likely? So Chandra's plussing. Could already Epiphany the ability here. Although we're not countering a spell. Finds a Get Lost, Wrath, and Iteration. And now an Elspeth Conquers Death. Okay, so... I'll have to attempt to counter it. So what do we want to bounce? I guess Oracle of the Alpha versus Chandra. Go for Oracle. Copy Hinata, draw a card. And then we could see Pact of Negation in response. Which now gets copied by Chandra. But they're only gonna have to pay for one Pact. Opponent actually exiling Celestus instead of Hinata. Okay, so now we have Gear Hulk available to get back Sublime Epiphany, to get back Brainstorm afterwards. And that's the chain we can go for. So 
So now we want to bounce probably the Oracle. Copy Gearhole, could draw a card. And then Gear Hulk gets back Brainstorm. Okay, put back some lands. And we'll channel Crucible. The next turn, I suppose we could uh, intervention Elspeth Conquers Death if we want to. Opponent has to pay for Pact, so they can't Day of Judgment anything. And we're gonna get lost Hinata. So we can get in for 12. And then. Opponent would be able to get back Chandra here. For now, we know we can uh, draw land. Fight a fairy, untap two lands. I'll still be a little bit short of casting the intervention on Conqueror's Death. So maybe keep it simple and. Uh, Intervention. And attack. Sweltering Suns, probably not needed when we have Anger. Okay. So we had some interesting back and forth here. Pact of Negation made things a little tricky, but yeah, usually, unless you can win the game on the spot, Pact will come back to bite you when you have to pay 5 mana. The Fairy here of the Monaria. Could minus on the Gear Hulk. They can jump the other Gear Hulk with Oracle, fall to 1. But we have another Teferi to deal with Oracle, so that's not gonna get it done here. Or we could have cast Anger. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Captain Cisse. Typically a combo deck that tries to get a Paradox Engine going. I've got some decent answers to it at least, so I'll keep. Probably have to play Shelter as a land. Don't expect too much removal for Hinata anyways. Although Selfless Savior already something that can protect Captain Cisse. Of course countering it would be the better solution, but don't have a ton of those in the deck. A Relic of Legends. Well, I guess we'll play Hinata. And then Brainstorm without a fetch lands may not be the way to go. I'm hoping they wait another turn on Captain so we can Sublime Epiphany to counter it. Could always bounce with Epiphany as well, of course. I see. Mother of Machines. Don't really care about ETB effects too much in this deck. So... Let's see. Can play a Whirlwind. Two mana left. Of course they have the Savior to protect. Mother of Machines. So... Yeah, if I Whirlwind, I can't Clarion. It's gonna be difficult to Epiphany for just two mana. So maybe, let's see. Yeah, I can Whirlwind and then just cast Immolating Inferno to take out the Selfless Savior. It's 
So that's dealt with. And then Hinata can get in for four. Okay. And then now Deafening Clarion could be an answer to the captain. Yasharn now getting two forests and plains. That's still acceptable. And uh, we're getting close to a lethal crackle with power here. X equals three. Costs us eight mana. So still a little bit short. They can still cast Captain Cissé thanks to a Relic of Legends. It's going to be the Shield of Argive instead, which does shut down our Sublime Epiphany. So we need to take out some creatures here. So let's say we Mind Stone, maybe draw into a land, and then we can still Crackle. So two it is, and that would be 10 damage. So I guess Elish Norn and Shield versus going face to threaten lethal next turn. It's probably good enough. Bone on the two. And we've got some pretty good leftovers in case they answer Hinata. The one ring, I guess, can save them for a turn. Although, if they put a burden counter on it, then they would still eventually die to it, so it's only a temporary solution, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Iluna, which is often built as a combo deck trying to cheat Omniscience into play. So we need either counter spells or instant speed removal to interact with our combo. This hand doesn't really do that. This is better. Get an early Fable going, at least we have one counter spell. And now a turn to Signets. Can even uh, cast a Lightning Bolt now. Which could also be a way to take out a creature that they attempt to mutate onto. And there's a token, so... Yeah, the opponent's deck is going to be basically all non-permanent cards. And then uh, they're guaranteed to hit the Omniscience. So I don't really want to tap out for Hinata necessarily, but uh, Fable's fine. And our opponent's got the answer. Another token, discarding a portal to Phyrexia. So I guess they've got some non-omniscience cards as well that they could hit, but the idea is still the same. We'll go for Hinata. So next turn our opponent could attempt to mutate. If we take out the creature that they mutate onto in response, they still get the creature, just a 6-6 flyer. The foretold card could either be a counter spell or maybe Alrun's Epiphany take an extra turn. So we've got a few options available here. Inscription is going to be pretty cheap to cast with Kicker. And I guess we've got three targets, two creatures and a player. Normally it costs eight mana, so we can discount it down to five. Yeah, that could be worthwhile. Maybe start by attacking. So 
So we can't keep up Counterspell, but we'll still have Bolt. And a Plating to protect their tokens. At least we'll still get to draw. And then Jace is fine. And I guess so land is fine too. Okay. So they can mutate with protection. We could be in trouble. For now, emergent sequence. So they're not going for it yet. But they foretold another card, so it might be both a counter spell and an epiphany. But now we've got multiple answers and we're ahead on board. So might be unnecessary to tap out for Jace, would rather keep up all my interaction. Opponent already chumping. And I don't think we need to intervention a treasure. That was a Behold the Multiverse, that's fine. So yeah, we've got a pair of burn spells, a pair of counter spells. I don't think this is gonna go too badly for us. Could have considered just taking out the forest to begin with to deny one mana. I guess we'll do it now. Opponent with a commence the end game and response, which cannot be countered. So sure. Their zombie army is pretty large now, so we can bolt it. But we can still just counter Iluna with both Tails End and Counter Spell. And our opponent has seen enough. Jace also way to bounce the token. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kaya and Tangible Slayer, black white control. So can expect some early discard spells. Brainstorm can maybe hide some key cards. And then we've got answers for artifact ramp. Expertise is maybe a bit redundant. But uh overall this hand's keepable. Turn to treasure map, so good target for the intervention. I guess we'll brainstorm now, see if we can find a fetch land. No, we cannot. But uh, at least we'll be able to cast a two mana ramp spell next turn. And then it doesn't matter too much what we do here, maybe hide the intervention and the tail's end. And then we can double spell Iron Crag and Cold Steel Heart. And the Hedron Archive. Well, this Helix intervention is getting better and better. Question is, can I play Hinata and then still cast it? Well, looks like I can. Perfect. X equals three. One, two, three. That was satisfying. Now we are shields down on tail's end, but probably won't need it here. Cling to dust the draws. And an edict, a clean answer to Hinata. Now that we drew the Temporal Sundering, I'm tempted to replay Hinata. Could hard cast Shark Typhoon. Opponent could have some enchantment removal, of course. But it is tempting. 
problem is I don't have a great follow-up to the Shark Typhoon to start enabling it. So maybe I just replay Hinata. If they kill it, then we'll have to reevaluate. Skyclave Relic. And we get to untap. Okay, so Temporal Sundering. Take an extra turn, bounce your Skyclave Relic. And that's enough for a concession. We'll get in for 8 damage, see a few more cards, and then between Tails and, and Negates we should have most bases covered. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the Shield of Argive, so White Soldiers. And being able to counter it before it hits the battlefield is pretty important, otherwise it will shut down our future counter spells. And then I imagine Anger is going to be pretty effective at dealing with a bunch of small creatures. Sentinel's a good one. Not sure if I'll uh, try to play around it. Or if I just play a turn to Iron Crag, and then we can maybe pay for our three drop. Yeah, I think I still play an Iron Crag here. That resolves. Opponent's got the Mind Stone. So I might have to keep up Counter Spell now. Don't have White Four Swords to Plowshares. So I don't have a great answer if their commander resolves. So I'm just gonna have to pass, and yeah, I don't really get to do much. Maybe cycle Sweltering Suns. Since we already have Anger. Sarah Paragon is good, but doesn't do anything right now. And with Anger we would exile the Sentinel so they can get it back. Signet's not bad. So if I go Midnight Clock, I can still play Signet's and then have swords available. Of course, I wouldn't be able to swords once they deploy the 3-4, since uh, we can't cast any instants, so I may as well play the Cold Steel Hearts. And then next turn we can try to clean up the board. Alright, so if we Anger and Swords, they'll just be left with Sarah Paragon. And that might be alright. And then next turn, time to deploy Hinata to block Paragon. By Elspeth's command. So I can make a bunch of soldiers. Chandra's not bad. Can answer the Paragon. So if I go Shark plus Chandra... I'll be a little bit short of activating the Incubator token. But uh, if I minus with Chandra, then it's going to be vulnerable on the way back, so I guess we can Hinata and Chandra clear the Paragon. Or I can just hold up Counterspell. Yeah, maybe I keep up counter spell. If 
opponent with the swords. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a problem, so if I counter, we're going to be shields down. And with the land, they can replay their commander, but they might have different plans. A rally the ranks, naming soldier, presumably. Okay. And a fateful absence for Hinata. Soldier flies. Time for Shark plus Chandra, I think. Take out the Paragon. And can play Mindstone first. So we're generating some value. Shark can block the 3-3 three, three flyer. And then our midnight clocks also halfway here. We're in a bit of trouble if our opponent finds a way to destroy all our artifacts, and there's a few cards that come to mind. But uh expecting more creatures to fit into the soldier deck. The wedding announcement can also make some tokens. And now a Sun Gold Sentinel, 5-4, thanks to the enchantment. Okay, so Chandra can exile the top card, I imagine. Should maybe play the land first. And Shelter. I guess we can draw a card with it if we'd like. Alright, and then play Hinata, and then we should still have some mana left to incubate. Could also sack the clue token to draw. Just want to make sure we don't have too many cards in hand by the time Midnight Clock transforms. Although they might have removal for it. Opponent's touching a lot of our artifacts. So this could be bad. So the Sentinel can potentially become pseudo-unblockable here since they have Coven enabled. And now thanks to the flying, we won't be able to block with our incubators. Yeah, I guess we let Chandra go. A Retriever now protecting the soldier token. Alright, so we're starting to fall behind. Sank the clue. A wash away will come in handy. So play Hinata and then pass. And then we need to survive another turn cycle at least before Midnight Clock goes off.
All right, so we'll probably just jump with an incubator here, or we can try and trade for the retriever. Or never mind, I guess it still prevents all damage. So I'll just be jumping it. Take four. And wash away. Alright, need a good midnight clock to get back in the game. Well, mass manipulation goes a long way. So, let's see here. I've got plenty of blue mana. Probably no need to fetch. Keep that for a brainstorm. And then one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Board looks a lot more manageable now. Who's a soldier deck now? Keep up Tails End, and then end of turn we can incubate, destroy all non-land permanents. Yeah, that was to be expected. At least they also lose all their stuff. So, let's see here. This doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's gonna destroy all non-land permanents, like it says. Well, at least we still have a few more cards in hand. And then Gear Hulk doesn't have anything to get back at the moment. So probably want to get back Swords to Plowshares. Sarah Redeemer. A good target for Swords. Your opponent's down to one card in hand. Can replay Hinata, I guess. Or we can wait another turn, so I can play it with Tails and Backup. Might be better. Castle Ardenvale is actually pretty good. So now we have to worry about an army of 1-1 tokens. And, uh, yeah, I guess we want to just trade for Guardian Idol. Even though I could ambush with Gearhulk, I kind of want to get something more exciting back. Now we've got another counter spell. Could fetch to four and then still play Hinata, I guess, on an empty board. Even though the safer play would be to keep up my counter spells, but then we're maybe just gonna lose to a Castle Ardenvale. Put on main phases Castle. And a Brazen Borwar can also deal with a token. Okay, so we're back in control. This has been quite the game. Token attacks. Let's bounce it. And replay Brazen Borwer. Ooh, nice whirlwind of thoughts. Exactly what I wanted here. 
So now we can pull ahead whenever we cast a non-creature spell. Bowden makes a token. And heal its intervention. Seems worth countering. So... Wash away. Let's me draw a card. Can't quite keep up Gear Hulk. Should be safe enough to just attack. I guess we could smashing the token if we really wanted to. And then we'll still get to draw a card. Sure. And Prismari commands. Excellent. Okay. And the Filer of Faith survives Prismari Command, but we still have a Swords to Plowshares we can replay. Feels like they might have had Intervention in hand for a while when they were touching all my artifacts, which was a while ago. Portable Hole, just to make a 1-1. One -one. So can deal 2 damage... And then I guess we can draw to discard too since we'll trigger the whirlwind first, so we have a bit more card selection. If I go face, I can maybe speed up the clock by a turn, but still safer to deal with the token. Ooh, Magma Opus. That's gonna be a nice finale here. Especially alongside Torrential Gear Hulk. So get in for seven. And then we're gonna wanna Magma Opus, tap down the Defiler, and some of their lands. So we wanna damage the opponents. Four damage to their face, and then I guess we can immediately Gear Hulk to flash it back. And that'll do it. Opponent will make a token here, and that's game. Sweet. Well, that was a pretty epic way to end this video. And yeah, we get to see Hinata shine in some games, especially alongside Crackle with Power. That's kind of the classic way to finish out the game. Now overall, the deck is kind of medium power level, I would say. There's certainly more powerful commanders, even in just uh, Jeskai Colors. But if you enjoy casting huge X spells, then this might be the deck for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.